Hello there, welcome to the Ask Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz like there's no tomorrow. This week we're talking about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Badness. And if you're wondering why I sound terrible, yes, I am recording this <laughs> from my girlfriend's accommodation in London without a microphone. So just just roll with it, just roll with it. My name is Tom, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host, John. Hello, it's, it's me. It's me, John. You need to figure something better out than every time just being like, hello, it's me. <laughs> Because you got a great introduction, like, hey, everybody, welcome to the Albert Time Film Podcast. Gonna... <laughs> I tell ahead. you what, I've actually, I've actually got plans to make a theme song for the pod. So that's oh. exciting. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah, who knew? So, yes, Multiverse of Madness. The day is finally here. Let's just dive straight in. Full spoilers ahead, everyone. So if you haven't seen it, you know, get on down because there are definitely a few things to talk about. Uh, what did you think? It takes a lot to digest mm, from this film. Absolutely. There were some great moments, but there were some weird moments for characters that didn't really fit in for the film. Like, there's one character that wasn't explored enough, America. She doesn't really do much in the film, but, like, to teleport to mm. the multiverse and to explore her background. But the, the, the background to how she lost her parents is a bit She comical. saw a bee or a wasp. It, yeah, no, it was... I feel like she's a plot device. She's literally there as a tool. A MacGuffin. She's you know, a MacGuffin yeah. guy. She is a MacGuffin, exactly. She, and I think that the character that this film does well is Scarlet Witch. Oh, my God. Mm. I have to say, like, for me, obviously, if if you, anyone who's been listening to the podcast for a while, if you remember us doing WandaVision last year, all we wanted was for Wanda to be a villain and to explore that. And I think this film did it so, so well. I think Sam Raimi's direction with all this horror elements was very nice. I mean, the whole sequence in the Illuminati with Wanda in the compound, killing everyone and chasing them through like the sewers. I thought that was really, really good. And it's probably the scariest the MCU has been. And it, it has so much style to it. Yeah. And there were some scenes like transitioning, you know, like there were some really different styles that we haven't seen in the MCU, like some camera movements, like, you know, when Wanda's like floating and then like that camera just like, pans around and just mm. uh, do like a 360 like it gives us that horror vibe and there was one great sequence was when she was attacking cabotage and then <laughs> and wong says fortify your mind and then, <laughs> and then wanda sees one of the sorcerers down there and then she like teleports behind and it's like loses his mind and like oh my god so yeah she literally just wh whispers run and he just loses his his cool um yeah i mean it's interesting that you bring up the transitions because there's the way they, this film delivers exposition there's a lot of cross dissolving and fades and i think that's actually kind of like really unique for the mcu i mean this is one of the films where i cannot knock the style the colors are amazing the cgi yeah. is amazing and the editing i think it all comes together so well and it makes something that doesn't feel like anything else in the mcu and it makes me so happy because think about like Spider-Man 3, Sam Raimi didn't really get to fully, you know, do what he wants. And and I don't know much about the production of this film, but it, it seems like this is a Sam Raimi film before it's a Marvel film. I think it's got really good sincerity. The jokes weren't that bad, you know, considering most of the Marvel movies, we always complain about the jokes. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know, I think all of it was, was, was pretty good. Yeah, I didn't think I'd catch the jokes because... I was just having a mental breakdown just trying to watch the film. Oh my <laughs> God, there's so much happening. And, um, and there was a huge reveal with all the characters at the Illuminati. And it only short-lived. We got John Krasinski as... It was fantastic. That was a bit of a shock right there because I remember mm. him being rumoured in the Fantastic Four. And then th there well, he is. He's like, he's, he's like the fan cast, isn't it? Like everybody who wants the Fantastic Four, they want John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic and they want Emily Blunt as the Invisible Woman. I was pretty confident that they were going to do Mr. Fantastic because in the comics, Mr. Fantastic is one of the Illuminati. So I was yeah, sure it was either going to be John Krasinski or the guy from the first Fantastic Four film. And mm. I never liked the idea of John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, but I'm glad that we have it. You know, it was a really nice way to, to nod to the fans just for a couple of minutes, you know, to give, give them all that scene. And I think that it was, you know, it was a fine scene. Like, you know, we had him, we had Patrick Stewart coming back as what is essentially the 90s X-Men cartoon. Professor X, I thought that was really cool, really good idea, mm -hmm. uh, with the big yellow wheel wheelchair. Um, yeah. But what I like so much is how Wanda absolutely wrecked th those three. Oh, yeah. Well, those, those two and Black Bolt. Like, when when oh. one of them's like, oh, yeah. Black Bolt can, can kill you just by opening his mouth. 
and then she goes what mouth and then Ooh. you just pan out to he has no mouth and he tries to speak and just melts his brain <laughs> and then the way she d- exactly and then the way she just kind of like turns mr fantastic into spaghetti it was amazing it's exactly what like thanos was doing with, with the reality uh, stone yeah. in infinity war and i feel like that was so creative after so many films where people just shoot energy blasts at each other it was great just to see you know her be re- really creative and and I, I don't really know how <laughs> captain carter survived so long how did she survive but mr fantastic didn't i don't know but i really liked how I, she was uh, cut in half yeah. with her shield i just thought that, you know it was it was all a really really nice way to nod to the fans to nod to the illuminati of the comics and to also use these characters quite well in an action scene do you remember the first episode of invincible yes Yes, that exactly gave that vibe at the end of oh, it, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that was a great way of like seeing Wonder like completely losing it, just like, you know, mm. like the villain that we wanted to see. And that was great. And I was like, oh mm. wow, we're we're going into this. That's that's great. And that was a great scene as well. Yeah, then- absolutely. I mean, like in in WandaVision, we 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 critiqued and I rewatched One Division recently and I still think that the ending fight is really boring. It's just two people flying in the sky shooting lasers at each other. But this film does Wanda's powers so much more interestingly in the way that it's shot, in the way that, the, you know, the scene where they trap Wanda in the mirror dimension or what I assume is the mirror di- dimension and she's like pulling people out of, of like puddles, of reflections. Like that was so good. Like I think everything they do with Wanda in this film is top notch and I, I loved it. Oh, that was great. And there was like, as you said about like the horror elements in the film is just great. Like when Wanda, you know, chases them, Strange and Christine into the tunnels, and then she yes. like appeared out of nowhere. Like the water didn't drip, the stopped in midair, and it just appeared, and that was great. Yeah, I remember Kevin Feige was like, you know, announcing the film like, sorry guys, it's not gonna be R rated. <laughs> it's gonna be a PG thirteen. Um, it's gonna be PG thirteen. You're gonna like it. And there was a lot of gory stuff. Like what happened to Black Bolt? He. Just, his brain just got melted, man. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that we got to see a different tone, different vibe that it was mm. going for. And it, it, but it still did mostly deliver on the whole concept of the multiverse. Like we had, you know, that scene where Strange and America fall through all the different universes. And that was a really, really cool scene. It was taking that scene in, in the first Doctor Strange and taking it to the next level, I think. I think that was really nice. Yeah, I loved Daniel's score in this film. It's great. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I think that I did. I would have liked to see a bit more of the Michael Giacchino, Doctor Strange, Thor, uh, Doctor Doctor Strange theme, kind of be. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I was thinking of Michael Giacchino doing the score for Thor: Love and Thunder, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a bit more of his theme kind of come in. But we got a little bit of that, and and I think it was cool. I, I really liked the the way that Danny Elfman scored the final moments where Wanda where Wanda's kids see her as a witch and like the other Wanda kind of says like, oh, they will be loved and all that. Like I thought mm. that was really nice. A really nicely scored moment. Yeah. And then another favorite moment with Danny Elfman's score was when there's two strange fighting each other to get hold of the dark cold. They were using music to fight each, mm. each other. And that was they cool. They were. It yeah. was like Scott Pilgrim. It did. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't quite as good as Scott Pilgrim, but it was definitely like Scott Pilgrim. But I, I think that the action in this film in general was very creative, and it wasn't just the general kind of you know fighting style that we see in a lot of MCU movies. And I really enjoyed that. It it, it made it feel again. This film feels so different, and it feels so rainy, and I love it. I love that quality to it. But I do also think that because of that, and because of this film having to do the multiverse, we do lose some stuff. I think Strange himself. Has a very interesting arc. I really like all of his stuff with Christine. You know, kind of like the question of is he happy, and him kind of admitting to himself at the end that he's not very, he's not happy, and that he will love her in every universe. But there's also this kind of thing where he feels guilt about what he did in Infinity War, giving Thanos the Time Stone, mm-hmm. and they could have gone further with that. There's a moment at the end where they say, "Oh, Strange, you've got to take her. You've got to take America's powers. It's the only way." And it's kind of clawing back to Infinity War. And he's like, yeah, it's the only way. And then he realizes, no, there are other ways. But I kind of would have liked that to be explored a bit more. My, my problem with the, the middle chunk of this film was that it felt like it took a pause just so we could meet the Illuminati. 
And I don't feel like that really furthered the plot. And I liked those scenes. I didn't dislike them. Like it'd be a bigger problem for me if they were bad. But no, I thought they were good scenes, but just like put into a kind of weird context. They brought back Mordo after setting him up as like a, a, a villain at the end of the first one. And they mention how he is a villain, but they don't really do anything with him in Earth 616. Oh yeah. So, you know, I kind of would have liked that to, yeah. to you know, come back in some capacity. Oh yeah, the last time we saw Doctor Strange, the first film was like in 2016, and that was like six years yeah. ago. And that was crazy, because I remember, you know, at the end credits, you see Mordo just like attacking this one guy at, in the first yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if guy's name. And I thought he was going to be another villain in this film, but no, he wasn't really explored much i just i got like super confused when i saw him you know when dr strange travels through the universe and then just standing there just like ah yes join us tell us your different universe i was like what yeah i, yeah. I agree i feel like it, it, it feels similar to ragnarok in the sense that they have things from previous films that are set up but they're not very interested in actually telling that story. So instead, they just kind of go with their own flow. And to some extent, that's a good thing because you don't want someone, you don't want to make the director and the writers do something they don't want to do. But again, it feels a little bit weird. They just dropped that as a sequel. But the villains yeah. themselves in this film, a little confusing. Obviously, Wanda is the villain and she's great. But who? what's happening at the beginning? In the opening scene, America and this Doctor Strange variant are getting chased by this one like big like demon creature. And we never get any context as to who that was, why they were chasing them. You know, like I thought it would have been like some sort of like thing controlled by Wanda, but they don't they don't say that like what what was going on in that scene? Well, I thought it was Wanda, you know, dream walking in that universe and then create some demons to chase strange, that strange variant and America. But yeah, we didn't get context to that. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense though. I feel like I feel like that would that would make sense. I, I don't mind that as, as an idea. But yeah, I definitely think that that could have been a little bit more fleshed out. I feel like some of the setup of this film, while well executed, I do think could have been done you know, a little bit better, but mm -hmm. well, there we go. Um, I think that in general, like the 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 exploration that they do of the of the like the the main universe we go to, I can't remember the number, but you know the one with the Illuminati. I thought that was a really nice universe to explore. Yeah. But there was that weird scene where they look, they see their memories. Like that felt like a very weird way to do like character growth and bonding by having them stand on a thing and be like, oh look, that's my memories. Like I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> Oh look, look! It's uh, do you remember this film, Infinity War, but in a different universe? Whoa! And then <laughs> you see Strange just get obliterated by Black Bolt. Another thing that just reminded me, you know, there's Ultron bots. Yes. Does that mean Tony Stark was in this universe, or did someone else create this? I would Ultron bots. You know, I don't, I don't really know. I would assume so, but like, okay, so is this the same universe from What If? Because of Captain Carter. Because if it's the same universe of What If, we know that, that, that Howard Stark's there and, and like Nick Fury and stuff. But I, I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense to me. There's, there's a lot of kind of questions there. Because obviously uh -huh. in, the, in the comics, the Illuminati includes Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, Black Bolt, sometimes Namor, sometimes Doctor Strange, Black Panther and mm -hmm. Iron Man. And obviously they decided to do M Mordo and Captain Marvel and Captain Carter. But like, yeah, I did, I, they don't really give any indication as to whether those heroes exist. I assume that the Iron Man exists in that universe. Why not? And I just think with those Ultron bots, like I wish they had brought back Ultron for a bit in this film. Like that could have been like- Yeah, why can we- <laughs> Ultron was so wasted in his film and then he was wasted again in What If. And then like, all I, all I want is to see, like we thought he was going to be in one division. Like, like I'd love to see Ultron back in some capacity because he was- so wasted in in his film he really was <laughs> and you know like you could have seen that really interesting fight or like some really like traumatizing thing for wonder like th mm. that was a massive thing that happened in sokovia like the whole city just like exploded and, and she lost her brother and mm. isn't that you know traumatizing that shouldn't be revisited but no it all trans not yeah, that, yeah, that, they that's not gonna go they revisit <laughs> they they revisit it a little bit in one division, but that's more about her brother than it is about Ultron and her the place where she grew up, the place where she lived, 
like it, it's interesting that they kind of drop that and, and go with other parts of the character and I like that there's other parts but I think it's just an odd choice I think you're definitely right I mean I would like to say about the end of the film what if Wanda is dead honestly I will eat my kettle I do not believe it I, not for a second do I believe that Wanda is actually dead like there was that pulse of red energy yeah, at the end dead. No way, no way is no way they're gonna kill Wanda with white vision out there. Like that's just too much storytelling potential. No, no way. Oh yeah. I don't believe it. Oh yeah, that that vision in Wonder Vision just mm-hmm. He's still alive, right? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. He he just left at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, guys, she's not dead. Yeah, I hope not. I hope she's not dead because that was a great character. That would be really cool if like, you know, Kang the Conqueror. Oh yeah. Like, I forgot about him. He's he's around. Yeah. He's knocking. He's kicking around. He's good. I wonder if Ooh. he's gonna like partner up with Wonder. You know what would have <laughs> been great if Kang was on the Illuminati, because you know we've had a variant of Kang. Oh, that makes in sense. Loki. If we yeah we had a variant of Kang in, in in Loki, and then if we had a variant in Multiverse of Madness in the Illuminati, I feel like that would be really interesting. You know, kind of because if he's gonna be a big villain setting him up over multiple films would be interesting and we could get to know a different kind of thing i don't know that would be that would be quite cool oh that'd be so cool like you know mm. if he's in the illuminati and then he was like oh i set up this multiverse machine like that makes sense where you know how do you know which universe they're in like christine tells strange that he's in from the universe 616 and yes you know how they got the universe names and that would be really interesting if they had like kang in that and like set up this whole huge villain for kang so yeah, yeah that would definitely be cool i mean like i think at the end of the day i don't think that this film used its cameos you know for lack of a better term okay i don't think this film used its multiverse all characters as well as no way home no way home used at least Doc Ock and Green Goblin well. They furthered their stories. They furthered the stories of Toby and Andrew. But this film just had them there, like, just so they could be, like, cameos. Like, the Illuminati were just there just for that. They didn't really have any stake in the story, nothing to really tell Strange, like, about himself. I don't know. I feel like it was just fan service here, whereas in No Way Home, it was a bit more than that. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, like how they used John Kaczynski... I think that's it. But well, I mean, we got Professor X, Black Bolt. But they were all there to like just make the fans happy. Oh yeah, and Captain Carter. Mm, it is yes, Captain Carter, right? It is Captain Carter. I mean, because I said Captain British, British, Captain British. Yeah, Captain Britain. Captain Britain. <laughs> Captain Britain. Yeah, that's an actual. I mean, that's an actual superhero. Yeah, Captain Britain I, is 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 in the Lego game. Remember, you can get you can get uh, him yeah, in Lego yeah, Marvel. yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, there's there's a hero called Captain Britain. Oh. Okay, sure. sure. Why, why not? Let's. I would um, be surprised if we didn't see Captain Britain somewhere out there. Um, the oh, there's one thing. And um, there's one thing we haven't talked about is Strange himself. You know, throughout the film, he feels like defeated. Like, uh, well, I mean, not, like not kind of defeated. Like, you know, he sees Christine getting married. He, he's mm. he's down bad. Like, he's trying to you know f- fix his life together. And then you know, once he goes to a different universe, he sees a different Christine. And there's this whole arc, you know, whether he wants to be in a different universe with Christine or, you know, just accept who he is, but, you know, how he's going to, you know, deal with his life. And then at the end, when, you know, Strange uses the dark hold and done finishing with it, and then he tells Christine that he loves her in every universe. And that's mm. that's a better statement than I love you 3000. That, that's... <laughs> yeah, like, I, oh, I agree. Yeah. I, I think that was really, really, really nice. Yeah. And I don't really believe in their relationship based on the first one. Mm. Obviously, it's not really a relationship, but I don't think that it was developed very well. But I think Christine got a lot to do in this film. And yeah. I like the way that they, that they furthered that. Uh, and they also furthered Stranger's arc in the first one by having him care for America. You know, they make him different than how he is in all the other universes. They kind of definitely show this Strange as a unique yeah, that was a really emotional bit, you know, like he was trying to, you know, tell him that he still love her, but then he has to accept that he has to find someone else. I, I don't know, like, you know. He's got to go and get himself a third eye. Ah, yeah, at the end, like this whole bit, you know, when he fixes the watch, but only with his hands, and that's a really 
in interesting detail you know like usually he would yeah. use magic to solve things like he he used sorcery to you know fix his tie you know like you can do his tie at the beginning when he goes to the wedding and then he fixes the watch and i thought that's a really nice detail to show that he's moved on yeah uh, i didn't notice that that was that was cool yeah yeah we like that and then yeah, at the was, end we got straight Whoa. got his Whoa. third eye Ooh. Whoa. That was very Sam Raimi. It felt like, you know, like having watched all the Evil Dead films, they uh, all, yeah. and even like, and even like Drag Me to Hell, they all kind of end with like this kind of big, you know, like final moment that is like a bit of a shock. And I feel like that was definitely in line with that, just him kind of being like, ah, and then that's how it ends. Like that was, that was really fun. Yeah. And I really like, you know, as he's stumbling like across the pavement and then like realizes that he's got the third eye. I really like, you know, mm. like there was like, you know, wind like blowing in and then like it was creating this chaotic energy around it. I was like, wow, okay. There was also, this happens a couple of times through the film. Danny Elfman uses this kind of electric guitar riff. And I thought that was like oh, a very interesting sound yeah. to use for this kind of thing. Yeah, I remember now. I remember there's a guitar riff. I was like, oh yeah. It's like, Bee! Yeah, Great, I remember. Sure. Okay. Oh yeah, and that post credit scene. It's Charlize Theron in the post credit scene. Is it? Where she co- Yeah, it is. And she comes she comes through. She's playing Clee, I think. Or Clea, I don't know. Um I haven't really looked into it. But and and she's like, We're gonna go through the multiverse. Uh because you've created a a divergence or or, or whatever it was that she called it. Yeah, I assume there'll be more multiversal travel in the next one. Okay, then that must lead up to Kang the Conqueror then. Yeah, possibly. I don't really know what's happening with that because he's apparently in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which is... Yeah, when's that? Next next year. Next year, yeah, sometime. I think it's in February next year. Uh, Well, Uh, hopefully we'll get Loki season two. Hopefully we'll get Loki season two to, like, you know, understand... What the hell's going yeah, where's, on? Where's, where's Loki? My, my God. I like, come on. Like, they're giving us, like, Miss Marvel and She Hulk, and, like, oh. I think you, you know, we were talking oh, yeah. about it, and then you even said, like, all you care about is, is Loki, and I agree. I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah. Falcon the Winter Soldier? No. Loki? Yes. <laughs> what, <laughs> Wonder Vision? No. Uh, there's, there's a lot of Marvel shows right now, and I'm like, what should I do? <sighs> another, what? another week. <laughs> but we got Daredevil coming back for Disney Plus. Woo! Yes, we do. Interesting, very interesting. I mean, hopefully it's as good as the original show. It won't be, but like that would be nice. Certainly. <laughs> hopefully they will add in some comedy. Just what we need. <laughs> um, I mean, oh no, John's joined the dark side. My so, third yeah, eye. I guess, I guess that's his third eye's opening. So I mean, I guess that's just another week, another MCU thing. Yeah. So what do you think? You give it out of ten. I really like this film, you know, with the score, you know, with the cinematography. Mm. I thought it was like, mm. you know, experimental, you know, with the horror, horror elements and, you know, Wanda being the villain. That was great. Hell you yeah. Know, we got hell somebody... yeah. It, what? Sorry? Hell yeah. Uh, hell yeah. I thought you said, oh, <laughs> hell no. I was like, oh, what? And then you're like, oh, how dare you, hell how yeah. dare you say these things? I'm going to give this film a 7 out of 10. I really liked it. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I could agree with that. I can't decide between seven or an eight, but I think probably seven. I think you're right. It wasn't as good as Sonic 2, was it? <laughs> no, no. But it was a really nothing, good it was a really good film. I, I liked it. Yeah. But yeah, Sonic I agree. 2. Woo! Sonic 2. No, that's oh my no, that's cinema, and you can watch our episode on that <laughs> that's right cinema. now if you're interested, and you should be. So yeah. That's I guess that's it for this week. Yeah. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and you can Subscribe if you want to see more. We've done loads of Marvel stuff recently. We did Dark Strange last week. We did Moon Knight the week before. We did Avengers for its 10-year anniversary. And we've got oh, loads of stuff coming because next week we're doing Thor, the first Thor from 2011. And we're going to be continuing on with the Thor films. And we're also going to be doing a lot of summer blockbusters. We've got Top Gun. We've got Jurassic World. We've got Obi-Wan Kenobi. We've got Lightyear. We've got Bullet Train. We've got The Grey Man. We've got Miss Marvel. There's loads of stuff coming out and you will not want to miss it. So subscribe if you want to see all of that. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram if you want to hear our thoughts or see our amazing thumbnails at our time. Film pod, or you can tell us your thoughts or questions at ourstimefilmpod at gmail.com. Send us an email and we'll answer it on the pod. And I think that's everything. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We enjoyed talking about Dutch Strange, Multiverse Madness. Good film. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if you want to. Yeah. Good film. Th- thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs down is 
way, way down like one or two but yeah uh, thank you for uh, for listening um take what you're given oh be, be safe and oh, be good oh yeah yeah do, yeah do that don't forget everyone be safe, uh, be be safe good. and be good you know you, you don't want to be opening your third eye or something like you know <laughs> get hold don't of the dark hole third eye and um, thank you for listening. Uh, take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.